it's very hard to make good corporate <laughs> mandated cyberpunk because it kind of goes against the whole vibe. Yes. And that's a criticism of the story I've seen a lot. It's just like, yeah, you're blowing up buildings and whatnot, but like everything just seems just like what a 12 year old anarchist thinks <laughs> yes. cyberpunk and anarchy should be. Yes. And it becomes the thing it's talking about. Weirdly yeah. enough, the object you're interacting with, much like another object you might interact with, Max, uh, the a movie specifically. Oh, I was going to say the wall that I'm banging my head against after watching the film we're doing today on the Spectator Film Podcast. Hello, everyone. I'm Max. I'm Austin. That joke doesn't make any sense, though. It makes 100%. Cyberpunk wall? Yeah, you just no. slap some. I was just, uh, just let me do my joke where I'm like, oh, it's the movie. We don't, th- there's no walls. This is just so unnecessarily complicated. They're making it complicated. But, you know, anyway, the movie we're doing today... Did we say the movie we're doing today? No. Okay, well, I'm Austin. <laughs> uh, the movie we're doing today... Great start to 2021, everyone. <laughs> Hello. We, we wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, the movie we're doing today is Johnny Mnemonic, and it was my choice. Yes. Lay all the blame at Austin's feet. Yeah. I uh, Explain this... yourself, because I've watched this movie and researched it, and I still don't understand why you picked it. Well... It left me in my defense for any for any <laughs> fans we may have of the show. I bet they would not have been able to guess that this was the movie we would be coming back with. I and bet it, they they wouldn't have guessed it. So in that way, I surprised you guys. And got it, you. And it wasn't the one we were planning on coming back with anyway. <laughs> so got you. I got all of you. Um, but also, I'm gonna say basically the biggest reason I chose this because I watched it for, for the first time like several years ago, and I was like, "This is just like so like meh," um, but it's a '90s action movie. It's sort of got some things. Um, the real reason <laughs> I'm really cho- selling this film. It's sort of got some things. All right, put but, it on the poster. <laughs> wait a second though. The reason I chose this is obviously because it just has the the thing that's this internet 2021, and I'm like, "Well, we've got to." We've got to. And uh, beyond that, there's really like, oh, we could tie. It's topical because it's Keanu Reeves in the cyberpunk thing. It's, to give you a perspective of how long we've been yeah, try, struggling to get another episode out. Yeah. When we first considered this cyberpunk 2077 had just been released and was <laughs> just the Internet's favorite dumpster yeah, fire. It, it was just in the process <laughs> of crashing into a wall and a cyberpunk wall, perhaps yes. like the one you're banging your head against. Um. But yeah, so <laughs> it, it'll still be topical. People will still be coping think, with the fact that I think the internet has moved on already. I haven't seen anybody mention Cyberpunk no, 2077. We still need at least several bean dads to get past, several bean dads and more capital building takeovers <laughs> to get past <laughs> Cyberpunk. Um, the gamer community, quote unquote, has moved on. Maybe other people <laughs> haven't. But. We'll see. I... My point is that, you know, there's fun things. And cyberpunk itself is interesting. I'm just like, oh, we could talk about cyberpunk. But really, this movie is just so, like, bleh, uh, despite the presence of Ice-T. Um, and uh, I don't know. I This is going to be an interesting episode because there's really just, like, not a lot to say. Needless to say, this movie is not amazing. It could have been interesting. It's based on William Gibson's story that I haven't read. Um, and I've never read anything by William Gibson, but I know he has a decent reputation as a writer. Um Weirdly enough, I feel like I might be interested in seeing a remake of this movie. In fact, I think you could make a really good remake of this movie and still have Keanu Reeves as Johnny. Yeah. Be more it'd be more sad if he was an old man trying to get his memories as a kid back. Um, I mean, people always joke that Keanu Reeves never ages and it's not entirely true. <laughs> but like everyone ages. He's still he still looks good. You could still looks have him do good. It. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, Max, what's your story with this movie? I have no story. Um, When you suggested this movie, I had never heard of it. My Keanu Reeves backlog is completely full. I need to catch up on a lot of it. But normally when you suggest, like, a shitty, shitty movie, there's, like, some interesting directorial flourish or, like, it's the starting point for an actor that we really like. Or... It's an inside joke between the both of us, and we just kind of want to do it. Something along those lines. So I just kept waiting for that to happen. Or, you know what I actually kind of went into this movie expecting? What? Because you gave me, like, no context. (laughs) I was kind of hoping for a second Tank Girl where we watched this movie, and we're like, wait a minute. There are a lot of good things in this movie. Not quite. 
especially since they both share iced tea, you yeah, can see think. you can see where my thought process was coming from. But no. <laughs> this movie um is remarkably dull for the majority of it, which is funny cuz there's a lot of just like fun cybernetic concepts. There's a lot of like by today's standards, you have like big actors. I know like for a long time that <laughs> Keanu Reeves was considered just a piece of shit actor, and for a long time I was like Oh, you guys are just mean. He wasn't ever that bad. And then I watched this movie. And I'm like, oh, ooh, yeah, he was pretty bad. bad. It's bad. It, it, it's still charming, weirdly, because it, it's him. But it's like it's bad. It's definitely a bad performance. He was nominated for a Razzie for this movie. Yeah, he narrowly lost it to Polly Shore. <laughs> he could definitely do this performance a lot better now. Yes, I think. But you know, it's not like it's not like there's a lot. But to no, go there's off Takeshi of. Katano in this yes. movie. It's very random. Returning to the Spectator Film Podcast. He's an excellent actor, and we'll get into more. There's a Japanese cut that's apparently more filled with content and slightly better because of that. I have only seen the opening screen of the Japanese version. It's hard to find, but maybe if I rewatch that and I'm just like, Austin, the Japanese version makes this a movie that I don't want to shoot myself through the entire time, we can revisit it. But as it is now, it's just sort of like a sloppy slapdashed thrown together thrown together 90s action flick that's trying to capitalize on a semi well-known cyberpunk author's property i guess it's trying to capitalize i guess on like a vibe yeah it's like oh the crow just came out hackers just came out the net just came why out why aren't we doing hackers instead you said hackers was too bad to do and you're making me watch this because hackers doesn't have the internet 2021 no, but it does. And it does. It does have Hack the Gibson, Hack the Planet. No. Come on. No, no. It doesn't have Internet 2021. It doesn't have Jesus Time. It doesn't have. Uh, <laughs> there are several, several gifable moments in this movie that does not make it. Jesus Time. That does not make it a good That's film. a great line, though. You got to admit, just like you expect, like. I think at that point in the movie, <laughs> most people are just so fucking worn down from the rest of the <laughs> film. Did you just say that? <laughs> that. They're just like, okay, whatever. Who cares? Dolph Lundgren just say Jesus time. (laughs) So yeah, none of us are particularly like willing to go to bat for this movie. (laughs) But after like the past couple of months and how just insane everything has been, you guys just want to watch a fucking dumb movie with us. Want to have a good time. Yeah. We begin the year with shit posting. That way we can, you know, improve. We can only go out from here. Yeah. In the meantime, sit back. And hack your own brain, everybody. Yeah, in the meantime, it's Jesus time. Here we are with the film, everyone. Yes, welcome to the commentary track. Our first commentary track of the... We didn't mention this in the introduction, but our first episode in the Jeb Bush era. Our new president. (laughs) What the fuck are you talking? You're the only one who hasn't let this movie go. <laughs> I'm so glad that we have Jeb Bush in charge in the second decade of the 21st century. So we start with this text crawl, uh, which was my first warning that this movie was going to be bad because yes. <laughs> these laser effects are fucking terrible. <laughs> For multiple reasons. Um, terrible. It's driving driving yeah. my focus away and stopping my ability to like retain any information. Yeah, it's distracting. It makes you not want to read it. And that's in addition to the fact that, like, it's the most complicated text crawl in history. And there's sentences that are, like, non sequiturs. Also, can I just tell you? It, okay, yeah. The Japanese version of this was much more condensed because there are more scenes explaining how the world is like in that cut, apparently. And also, it starts off fucking great with New Century, Age of Terminal Capitalism. The, armor, the armored towers of multinational corporations rise above the ruins of the democracies that gave them birth. That doesn't fuck around. I'm pumped for your movie if you start off like that. I mean, that's kind of campy, but it's like, I like it. Yeah. Where it's like, terminal capitalism. Got a little synth. Oh my God, that explosion effect. If that was in 3D, we might be dead right now. Yeah. <laughs> we could have died. That's not 3D <laughs> That's words. how intense that is. All right, here's the whole reason we did this movie. Are you ready? Into the Digiverse. <laughs> Internet 2021. That's it. That's why we did this movie. Ooh-wee. And uh, that and 
cyberpunk semi relevancy are the only two reasons I could think of doing this movie. You know, the internet sure is like this a lot. One hundred percent. This is every time I open Twitter. <laughs> And everything about, like, how terrible the script for this movie is can be found in this opening scene where we get, you know, a set piece that is, you're going to find is, like, maybe kind of typical of a cyberpunk thing, you know, a dingy motel room, would-be dingy motel room. Keanu is nude in bed. He's just fucked this girl, or maybe they didn't fuck. Maybe that's why she's leaving. She's disappointed. She put her pant... That, this is the first sign it's weird. He's watching cartoons or whatever. Um, she left her panties on like an omelet, but like on the omelet. So that's like, what? Like, why is it on the food? Second of all, they fucked. And then what? He just went straight to bed. And then she asks him what? Like, she asks him about himself. And he's like, oh, you wouldn't believe it. And she's, she's like, I'm going to get ice. And he's like, we've got ice. And then she's gone. Done, done. And the, the rollout of that conversation is about as inhuman as my description. <laughs> like, their conversation is like, who asked somebody, like, like Max, like, tell me about your background. Oh, I've got to get ice. <laughs> it's just like, what? Well, that's how we met. I'm, I walked up to you and I was like, so, tell me about your tragic backstory. I've got to get ice. <laughs> and then we never did a podcast together. Yeah. It was very weird. And then we called Udo Cure <laughs> on our television. And he's like, what do you boys want? Why the, like, we go to the fact that, like, he has, like, screens on his eyelids, like, or inside his eyeballs, because he gets, like, a wake-up call inside his brain. I don't, I don't know. Why does he have to call people on the TV? I think that was just a reflection. Was it supposed to be? Because it was, like, the perspective made it look like it was coming through his head. But I, you know, I think it was just, maybe they wanted it to be that, but it's just, it doesn't matter. Just a reflection. And here we have the first historical inaccuracy. Because uh, obviously the internet is exactly like that. So this movie was prescient in that way. Um, but the first <laughs> historical inaccuracy is Keanu Reeves saying that, like, if he wanted a medical procedure, he would just go to Mexico City. As if that that would be, like, cheaper in, like, a bad way. But wait a second. No, so... No, he's in Beijing right now. Yeah. So he doesn't have the yoke of American healthcare. But... What I think they're saying, like he's saying, is like he wants his full memory restored because yeah. he had to delete his childhood in order to become memory network man. Boo hoo. Um, Get over it. So, yeah, that's that's his reasoning. Central Beijing. We learn nothing about China or Beijing or the Yakuza or anything. Yeah. Uh, or Takeshi Kitano, besides at the end of the movie that he had a daughter that died. Also, another interesting thing I found out, um, we're going to be introduced to the plague later on. NAS. The Black Shakes, as they call yeah. it. I learned in doing research for this that that originally was supposed to be a side effect of there just being electronics emitting signals everywhere. Yeah. Constantly in the Henry future. Henry Rollins says it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Henry Rollins is in this movie. But... They cut that out because they didn't like the implications of that. So <laughs> they were just like, ah, it's a plague, whatever. But also it's weird because you see people wearing masks and it's like, well, is it viral or what is it? No, it's supposed to be viral in yeah. this movie. Is it though? Yes. He's an anti-masker. He was going out in a crowd of people without a mask. Nothing is thought through. This movie is just surface level aesthetic and it just, like, doesn't think about anything Paging that it's doing. Mr. Smith. You know why Keanu Reeves is anxious there. Yeah. Because that's his alias. Yeah. Why, what other reason would there be? Because that's what Ice-T calls him. I love the idea that, like, it, for some reason in 90s movies, when they're depicting the future and there's, like, hackers and shit, they, like, think of, like, a signal is a thing that you can actually like grab and disrupt in that way where it's like ice tea is like, yeah, I'm going to bust my face out onto this hotel monitor <laughs> for five seconds and be like, wake up zombies. <laughs> and then just disappear. Back. I think, and I think it's because it's a bunch of old people like <laughs> in the internet, like radio. Yeah. So they're just like, Oh, we can 
you can disrupt a radio signal, so you can do the same thing with this, right? And it's like, well, it's no. like, no. In, but it's like in a newsroom, yeah. And then the guy's like, "Sorry about the technical difficulties. Uh, you weren't supposed to see iced tea." <laughs> uh, it's just like with that's several not how monitors. Any of this works. Yeah, no. but like reading stuff about the original short story and the Japanese cut, I'm like, I'm kind of angry at this movie now that it's such a nothing sandwich. The short stories, I mean, I, again, I haven't read any William Gibson. It sounds kind of interesting. And my impression is they didn't know what they wanted. Like, it seems like a total first movie thing, which Robert Longo, this was his first movie, and the only movie, as far as I know. Um, but it seems like so much of a, like, mismanaged project because of, the, like, the fact that it's the first movie. Like, it seems like they were maybe trying to go with, like, a lighter comedy tone, you know? Like, when Keanu walks in and they point guns at him right there, he's like, anchovies and extra cheese it's like is this a joke he's, he's pretending he's got pizza but the tone is so weird and um like the line delivery is very bizarre not just from keanu but like from everyone like there's a line coming up here where these two like undergrad scientists who are talking to keanu and they're talking to him about his storage capacity they're like we approached you through the proper channels your storage capacity it's like, wait, the second part of that is supposed to be a question. It's not, they're not just like saying it, but it's clearly like they're, they're not directed properly. Where am I taking it? Newark, your storage capacity. <laughs> and yes, you can make many, many jokes about like Keanu's brain only <laughs> being able to hold 160 gigabytes. Don't worry about it. Oh. It's sad because, like, and I know wholesome Keanu has, like, become an overdone meme in our current society, but, like, I can't help but look at the guy. I'm just like, I just want to hug you, man. You seem like a good guy. That's why I think he's bad in this, partly. Because it's like, even at the time you watch him and it's like, I don't believe you're, like, an asshole. But I think the ca- character is supposed to be more of an asshole. In the first, like, and John... He's a corporate chill. He's supposed to be terrible. Yeah, and John Wick, like... They spend a good portion of the first John Wick movie being like, yeah, we're going to kill the wife. We're going to kill the dog and we're going to fucking just go make you understand why this guy is going to go full murder mode. Yeah. And they they make it work in John Wick because they take that like gentleness and niceness that he has. Yeah. And they make it as like a thing that's in response to a level of evil that you don't see. So it's like, oh, it's like, oh, he's gentle. And that, like, his gentlemanness, like, must be proportionate to how evil he was before. So you buy it, like, in an inverse way in that. Like, John Wick is really, like, a great example of how people take advantage of everything Keanu offers as an actor. Um, Like, I think he does, the action in this movie isn't good. But I think he's always been a fairly solid, like, action actor. Like, I think he's great at doing physical scenes. Yeah. And, and doing like action type scenes. In fact, this was his first uh, role after Speed, huh? Which was probably one of the biggest movies in his career up to this point in terms of like launching him into the superstar role, and kind of honestly launching him into I think the most like mediocre phase of his career, where he's got a ton of great performances under his belt already. But I think like for the middle phase of his career. He was stuck doing this kind of like suit, like semi leading man thing that it, I just don't think worked all that often, you know. And now that he's older, he's he's doing different roles that I think really take advantage <laughs> that of that guy's him. face on the right. Was great. <laughs> a stupid looking face. You, like you see this stuff, and it's just so stupid. But you can imagine how this would be cool, right? Yeah, I can. But like, yeah. it looks like they're putting a PSP disc and plugging it into a yes. pack of cigarettes. Yeah. He has a Oculus Rift on his head. And I like kind of get that they're kind of going for like a cyberpunk thing with like the Humphrey Bogart movie and the anime behind him, you yeah. know? And it's supposed to be like Whoa, but like some a collage of the, effect of different media overlapping. Even in the nineties, this looks bad. Like I'm yeah, it's sorry. It's just dated. It's just it looks dated and dumb. Like the satellite effect they have later on literally looks like it could be from an opening of Mystery Science Theater three thousand. Like yeah, it's pretty bad. But I I they're going for a cyberpunk thing. They're just not doing it well. And I and they sort of get what they're supposed to do. Like the whole cyberpunk aesthetic is built on the principle of like 
overwhelming amounts of like accumulation of commodities, um, which is why cyberpunk stuff is like specific to late capitalism, because it's this idea that there's just like all this shit everywhere, you know, and like we've reached the state in capitalism where it's like revealed truly to the world how like the government is just basically a mediary, you know, for for giant corporations that are actually in charge. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, and um, and if you're talking about cyberpunk twenty whatever, in terms of like the tabletop thing, that it did that very well. Before, yeah. <laughs> before the game smoothed it out and ruined it for everybody. Well, I mean, the thing is, like the the thing that this game, the game, and this have in common is that they're weirdly like in a meta way cyberpunk artifacts themselves because they're big corporate things that are like not properly functional <laughs> that are like shat out to consumers, you know? And, and then like people repurpose them like us interacting with this is like an inherently cyberpunk thing because we're, we're creating like a paratextual element to this text that was created by a giant corporation and we're repurposing it for our own needs, which is, the first episode of 2021 on the spectator film podcast. We're broadcasting it live to the masses for free. Low not- tech style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like that's, that's like at the heart of cyberpunk things from a Marxist perspective is like a, a like a fundamental shift in like the nature between like capital and consumers. That's the thing though. Like I always think that like if this stuff became like, not, not this, but like, augmented limbs and eyes and shit became like the norm. I would 100% jump on that. But I only have a couple of tattoos and like that's much more accepted than it used to be. So yeah, I'm not sure if I would actually go through with having my eyeballs ripped out or be replaced with computers. It's also, I don't trust. Yeah. Especially since it would be outdated in six months. Yeah. <laughs> like It's like, I got to do an update on this. Oh, uh, you so got to change the UI of you my got eyeballs. the, you got the X two eyeballs. Those have a problem. You can't see the color red after the most recent patch. I'm sorry, man. Fuck. Yeah. You gotta buy the premium package to see red now. Yeah. No, that would suck. And also, but I guess my point in bringing up all of that is that I, I feel like they get some of the design elements of that with all the accumulation of commodities and shit. Oh my and God. The fucking action cinematography in this movie is bad. atrocious. It, the action is clunky as hell. Um, I do think the it's shots funny. are all angled wrong. I have no idea where anybody is in relation to each other. Fucking. Ugh. That guy, his fucking face. Hey, it's Liu Kang from Mortal Kombat. Is it really? <laughs> no, but he looks, he's wearing the same fucking outfit that he does in the What was this conversation movie. we had somewhat recently where, like, for some reason, there was a period of time in U.S. cinema from, like, the late 80s into the 90s where there was always, if it was an action movie, there was guaranteed to be, like, an Asian guy, bad guy with long hair. You know what I'm talking about? It was, like, the height of, like... There's always one of them. Well, yeah, but like 90s was the height of like Japan has reached. Re- oh, well, the height of like the post-war economic miracle. Yeah, and- talk about the other cyberpunk thing of this, the yellow terror element of this. Why is it Yakuza? Why is it Takeshi Kitano? Why is it Japanese people? Who knows? Well, that's a common thing in cyberpunk. Yeah. Um, and even cyberpunk 2020, the original tabletop RPG is not immune from that. But it, yeah, it plays on the fears at the time that the Japanese, because they were doing so well, and because a lot of them were immigrating to California, yeah, that their culture would just subsume ours, and yeah. it would just be. What's that line from Die Hard where he's like, "They're paying us back with like Toyotas and Hondas." Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, God! Here's this moment. I think this was the first moment during the prep you got really annoyed with me. Are <laughs> you Keanu? Uh, apropos of nothing, it turns out he has a a disguise <laughs> in his in his jacket, and he walks out. He has pistachio to, disguise, <laughs> and, <can> just, <laughs> and he's like doing like a mock. I don't even know what the character is supposed to be. Is it supposed to be like an Asian guy? He has like a weird bowl cut, <laughs> and he just walks out of the hotel, like pretending, oh, nothing to see here, folks. Oh my god, a Concord. Max, they're still around. Why do we get rid of the cool things? I don't know. Got rid of the faster than sound plane. Great job, guys. John Smith. Born 1991. (laughs) 
<laughs> Warning, your brain's gonna fucking shut off in a day. Have a nice day. <laughs> Free city. And I don't New like York. I'm just gonna put this out here just so we like we say we've covered it. I do not have the energy in me to like talk about how fucking synaptic seepage would work and how it makes no sense that because he doesn't have enough room in his brain computer that it's going to sink into his actual brain. How that makes literally no sense, but whatever, Max, whatever it's science. You're not smart enough to get it. Okay. It's science. Hey, it's our good buddy Takeshi Kitano. And this man with his Coke finger that we didn't remark upon yet. But as far as Coke fingers in cinema go, this one's a pretty good one. It's a cyberpunk Coke finger. Yes. Do you think Takeshi Kitano is good in this movie? I go back and forth between thinking he's like actually intimidating or that he's just like, fuck, the, like, fuck this. He does seem like he's phoning in a little bit. Um, but he's good. He's No, he's an excellent yeah. actor. Um, he just is effortlessly intimidating, you know? It's just, I think... He's not given a lot to work with, especially in this cut of the movie. We don't know anything about him other than, like, he's a high-up Yakuza boss. Yeah. And then later on, the movie tries to, like, give him conflicting emotions. But, like, it's happening so fucking fast. You're just like, wait, what? Yeah. Was it, were we supposed to feel that the entire time? You know what I think it is? I think it's just that he's that good. Where he's like, you can see that he's not trying that hard. But also, it doesn't matter. <laughs> he's still, like, kind of intimidating. He's just something about him. He knows how to play intimidating characters. Unlike anyone else. He's really just like a fascinating actor. Also very talented director. Not a great game designer. What? Oh, have you never heard the legend of Takeshi's challenge? No, he, he made designed an, a game. He made an NES game. That's like his like, hilariously like one of the most just like baffling and hard to beat games of all time it was a very ambitious for the time but like there's no way that like anybody playing it could have ever beat him <laughs> <That was> just <laughs> like you could have been an inside joke you like it the game to be like begins with you getting like fired from your job and like <laughs> you have to like go home and divorce your wife what? after dumping all of your money or withdrawing all of the money from the bank so that she gets as little as possible in the divorce settlement. <laughs> it, it's, and this is an NES era game. This is like eight bit. It's, it's baffling wall street scumbag simulator. <laughs> so wait, this is just about like, like bullshitting your way through like, no, and then life prices. Then you have to go waste all your money at Pachinko. Um, I don't and why get, it, what no it's like utterly baffling like what the <laughs> game is supposed to be nobody understands speaking of not understanding you know who else doesn't understand is Henry Rollins Henry Rollins do you know you're in a movie what's going on why are you in this movie were you friends with Ice-T is that how you got in this movie and Dina Meyer welcome back to the podcast from Starship Troopers Speaking of Dina Meyer, you know what this, this movie really needs? The thing that is stopping this movie from being a classic is that it's not directed by Paul Verhoeven. Would you say? <sighs> I don't know. I, I, I mean, Verhoeven would nail the satire aspect of it, which this movie is lacking completely. But I don't know. I think... I think you need a stylistic fucking vision that's that tends to be different than Verhoeven's for a movie like this to work. In some ways, this feels like a knockoff. There's like a number of 90s movies that are not specifically like, I don't know, referencing Verhoeven or built in reference to his movies, but like they feel like things that were made for him to direct and then they couldn't get him, you know? Um, and this definitely feels like that. Because And you know what I think it is? It's just like when I think of movies made in the 90s that are action movies and then have like giant corporate overlord villains, it's like, well, that's Paul Verhoeven. <laughs> and he's really good at that. 
And I think one of the big things that this movie is missing is instead of having the endless expository dialogue scenes talking about just this or that or the the corporate this and the corporate that's and the NAS. There was like Paul Verhoeven would show the corporations being crazy and like blowing up cities yeah. or something, you know? I'm trying to think like how much I'd rather see it than hear it. outside of like Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049 that like has been successful um that I really enjoy. Does that even count? Tetsuo. I mean Tetsuo, yeah, but Tetsuo is a different kind of cyberpunk. Tetsuo um, is obviously more of a experimental art house movie but like i think in many ways tetsuo is like the essence of cyberpunk or like it's the essence yeah. of the moral quandary of cyberpunk yeah. of the melding melding of flesh and machine but yeah and, and it's way more political than most cyberpunk movies actually are able to achieve in in a weird way god that movie is so good there was actually do you know the uh netflix show love death and robots um, no, I didn't watch past the first season. Basically, it's oh, did David Fincher do this? Do Love, Death, and Robots? He might have done an episode. Okay, but the whole thing is like each one is a completely unrelated sci-fi short. Okay, and I have like a ninety percent hunch that like all of these were just pilots that got sent to Netflix, <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're just like, eh, let's put them all in one show. But there was a big controversy when the show came out. Okay, because it became evident that because they're shorts Netflix wasn't always ordering them the same way for different people. And it turned out Netflix was changing the order based on how well it, <laughs> it thought you thought of gay people. <gasps> so if it, what <laughs> if it thought you weren't okay with gay people, it started with an episode that had a straight sex scene and had no gay characters. But if you thought you were gay or okay with gay people, it started on what I think is the best episode in the first season which features a lesbian cyberpunk chick fighting inside monsters for the riches entertainment inside and, monsters. Yeah. Like you jack your brain into like this artificially created fucking monster thing. It's like fight Pacific arena. Rim kind of, or what's that other one that you said Pacific Rim was like Might the anime. It was uh, an anime. Neon Genesis Evangelion. <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. Probably, yeah. Where they jack into a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just so much jacking in. <laughs> or perhaps it was like that other anime. The like propaganda fucking your wife anime from <laughs> oh, God, Inside no. the Giant Robot. That's a conspiracy theory. I just think it's funny, <laughs> but I love it. What, what is it called? That's called Darling in the Franks, and I've ranted about that what a enough. dumb title. It's bad. I know. Darling in the Franks. I know all y'all love to say that that's not what it's really about and that there's cute character oh, interactions. it's not about fucking. Okay. It's... I've seen the it's pictures. It's the most fucking cursed mecha anime I have ever seen in my life. I've seen the pictures, and it's about fucking... <laughs> The giant robots are a metaphor for sex, and if you can't tell that, it's because you've never had sex. Ice T knows it. Even Ice T knows. <laughs> Speaking of which, hello, Ice T. Ice T, who has the anarchy symbol tattooed on his forehead, just in case he forgets. What's his character's name in this? It's like Bony. Bony. <laughs> Every action scene in this it's just so dumb. They just it's told just that so guy dumb. to fall over and he fell over just perfectly. Like, no, like uh, uh, just fump. There's just like no 90 degrees back. Like everything about the action in this is like so on autopilot. You know? It's like, yeah, you know they're gonna stab I'm that guy. I'm fucking talking about anime in a Netflix show in the middle of action scenes because they're just so yeah, it's boring. Just like, and what? I don't care. And Ice J -Bone, J Bone, he runs heaven. A giant, elevated bridge in the middle of Newark. What bridge is this? Where is it going? Is that the George Washington? Like, no, that's not the George Washington Bridge. I don't know. Like maybe they moved it. There's no bridge. Like. Yeah, in the f fucking center of Newark. That's like the height and of the Golden Newark? Gate Bridge. And why Newark? I don't know why Newark. I assume that's something from the book that makes more sense. Um, but needless to say, I think probably in the book, the bridge, the ruined bridge, is probably an interesting metaphor 
in comparison to the Golden Gate Bridge and the promise of America, you know, like heading west, etc., where it's this ruined thing, but it's still potentially salvageable. Even still, there's the hint of a promise hidden in there. Ooh. This just reminds me that I'm mad that we live in the future and we still don't have the fucking uh, hip hop hip opera from the Fifth Element. What? That should be a genre of music by now. What's the Fifth Element? Is that the Bruce Willis? You've never seen the Fifth Element? Uh, I've seen it. It's a pretty. <laughs> no, you haven't. <laughs> yeah, I have with that's, Mila Jovovich. That's just one of those movies you say you've that seen. Movie's so I don't actually, that movie's dumb. That movie's dumb. It's remarkably fine. No, it's dumb. It's not bad. No, it's. Re- it, Luke Besson was like, I wrote this movie in high school. It's like, yeah, no shit, bro. No shit. Also cast someone other than uh, Mr. Epstein's best friend. Uh, what's his face? Bruce Willis? No. Chris Rock, or not Chris Rock. Who's the other comedian? <laughs> the only other one. God damn it. What's his fucking name? He's in the Rush Hour movies. Fuck. I know who it is. I'm Chris gonna, Tucker. Yeah, I was, I was going to say that. Fuck you. I'm just going to let Austin yeah, suffer. Yeah, the dumb version of Prince where he's screaming in a dress. It's like, God damn it. Also, that's the craziest thing. You see the like flight catalogs or whatever, and it's like Jeffrey Epstein's like c- criminal conspiracy of rapists, and you're like, Chris Tucker. And you're like, surely it's not that Chris Tucker. And then you look it up, and it's like, it's that Chris Tucker. What the fuck is going on? Why? Uh, sorry, this movie is exhausting enough. I don't need to go into fucking Jeffrey Epstein. Who or who or not wasn't in Epstein's black book. <laughs> We're going to cut his brain open to get the information out. No, they're just going to take his head off. Just put it in a bucket. Just dump the internet into this bucket. Anyway, a point I was ne- I, I never finished before, um, but I, I think this movie, to give this movie a little bit of praise, because we've come down pretty hard on it, I would say that I feel like they understand on a basic level the design principles of a compelling cyberpunk universe, and that's... that's, that's <laughs> I have this ominous fucking head cryo device. But anyway, I think they understand the principles, and it's like the principles of accumulation of commodities. Yeah, why not? They got one. Um, But uh, the principle of accumulation of commodities and uh, understanding that, like, it's just overlapping shit everywhere, which is why they get stuff like the Humphrey Bogart movie playing and the anime and everything. And also, like, you see different forms of communication. Like, it's kind of dated and funny now, but it's like they talk about, like, the Internet and everything, but they're also, like, sending faxes (laughs) and stuff like that. It's like, oh, like, all technology from every era is used. Because it's just like, there's just an abundance of shit. And on that note, the other interesting thing about cyberpunk is like, I think it was the first time in science fiction where like people looked at pure information as like an object or a commodity. Like Johnny Mnemonic in this is a courier, but the thing he's carrying is literal data. It's just information, you know? Yeah. And that's like a... That's something that comes with cyberpunk as a genre in the 80s, in, in the rise of like 24-7 media and the information age. It's like information itself is a commodity. Information itself is an object that can be possessed and something that is worth fighting for in the same way that like previously you would, you know, in stories you might you would get MacGuffins that are like, I don't know, crystal skulls or something. And this time it's just information. Now I will kill you. Yeah, oh, yet another movie where a guy slides after being sliced open. <laughs> I love how that can cut through that guy effortlessly, but it can't cut through that thin metal fence. Do you know how hard it is to just like cut effort- effortlessly through a human being? Yeah, <laughs> but thin metal fences. They're, they're just notoriously unable to do that. I, I can't believe Udo Kier just got like offed. And his bodyguard is like, yeah, I'm going to team up with this guy. It's like, just killed your boss. It was Udo Kier. You were like weirdly like licking each other 10 minutes ago. That's just part of the job. Never <laughs> liked that. <laughs> Got to do it. Oh, my God. 
That's what I hear from all of Joe Biden's assistants. <laughs> the weird licking. Austin, They're tired please. of it already. I can't. <laughs> You're already making me watch, Johnny. <laughs> okay. Come on, man. Give me a lick. <laughs> I'm going to give you a lick if you don't shut up pretty soon. <laughs> Uh, can we meet the kangaroo people yet? Oh, wait, no, that's a more enjoyable movie. <laughs> that came out the same year. Oh, <laughs> Ice T at this point in his life was like, <laughs> it's time for some dystopian post apocalyptic weirdness where I'm like, I live in a collection anarchist. of junk. <laughs> yeah, I live in a pile of junk and I work in a team of anarchists or whatever. I love that that shot reverse shot because they cut from the guy like pulling back an arrow and then they cut to the bad guy's face and it's got a laser pointer on it. <laughs> and it's like, wait, does his arrow have like a laser sight? We're even. Why wouldn't they just kill these guys? They don't want to start a war with the corporate people. I thought the whole thing was that they're at war with the corporate people. They are, but like. From the way he sound makes it sound, it's more like a medical metaphorical, like fight the power kind of war. <laughs> We're trying to fuck the system, man. Oh, so they're teenagers. Yeah, basically. Right. Oh God, just another terrible. Like, we, like I said, this, this was written by a guy who had never been on the internet. <laughs> so this was written by William Gibson. That's what I'm saying. He had never guess, been on the internet. I guess. I mean, we don't know. We. We don't know what the difference is between the original short story and this because I don't think either of us have read it. No. And I've never read any William Gibson. But it is kind of funny that he like wrote so much about like cyberspace and the net or whatever despite the fact that like he wrote those in the 80s when like and like no one used it. And it's remarkable how much the- 160 gigabytes <laughs> astounding amount of information. Also, Max, you know what's crazy? Maybe some doctor listeners you could get in touch and tell me I'm wrong and stupid. Would it take 320 gigabytes to house a cure for a vi- like a virus? Well, I don't think it's just a cure. It's like how to make it and distribute it and whatnot. And I was thinking about that. But like, so 320 gigabytes? It's like a, that's a lot. It is. It's more than like a PS4 can carry. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of information. They did like <laughs> they incidentally copied onto him like their version of like Call of Duty Cold War <laughs> onto his brain. Start seeing visions of Ronald Reagan calling him they thems. Oh, this is the other weird thing. This person who's pure data or like an AI or information or whatever. I, who the fuck is this woman? Who is she? Um, who the hell is she? She's like, Oh, the corporation killed me. And it's like, who are you? I forget. I, I honestly just clean forget. Was she like the original creator of it? Yeah. And like, but then why she lives in the digiverse now? Yeah. Well, the internet 2021. It's the Digiverse. I'm sorry. I grew up on Digimon. <laughs> I don't know what any of that means. That's fine. I don't feel like explaining things to you. But <laughs> Actually, I want to know something. Let me, let me Google real quick. What? What? Um, you better tell me right now. <laughs> what is the memory capacity of a human brain? According to the oh scientific God. American more numbers than we have, uh, 2.5 pentabytes or a million gigabytes. I bet that's not even accurate. I bet that's low. Yeah, but like more uh, information than we have numbers. Like, exactly. Yeah. You'd have to, like... And I know it's supposed to be... Okay, the device, even with the upgrade, can only handle 320 gigabytes. But, like, the fact that, like, that information leaking out would fuck it... I don't know. I, I shouldn't be questioning this movie's internal logic because it's, it's right dumb. in the worst part of his brain. Yeah. Also, like, I don't know. 
it's just like so bizarre. Like they create all these arbitrary things where it's like gigabytes. They're, like they're just using bug buzzwords, you know. Whereas like you know what a good like movie to compare this to in terms of the jacking in and the whole how all that works is Existence. Have you ever seen that? Yes, I have. Yeah, where that's much more interested in like the metaphysical quality of like that's changing your Existence reality. is literally this movie, but better. In a lot of ways, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just... Thank you for reminding me of that. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I can be a more angry at Johnny Minogue. Why aren't we watching Existence? Existence is great. Right? Oh my it really God. is. Yeah, I like it. It's, it's up there for my Cronenbergs. But, yeah. Uh, the disgusting bone guns. Yeah, it's weird. I love that. By the way, I was just thinking like... Speaking of David Cronenberg, I don't know why I was thinking about this the other day, but like if you were a woman in the universe of Dead Ringers and you went to Jeremy Irons as your gynecologist, what the hell is wrong with you? Yeah, I like, think, why I would, think you I would ever get there that? and see him and just be like, you know what? I'm going to reschedule with a different doctor. I'm sorry. I'm just not feeling this, man. <laughs> like who's more trustworthy, him or like Danny DeVito as a gynecologist? To our listeners who need to go to a gynecologist, please let us know who we would trust more. <laughs> because <laughs> i do not want to continue this conversation from my point of view can you just imagine danny devito is like all right let's let's pop open the hood i don't need to <laughs> austin you need to stop but it's just like you go into the i'm uh, feeling Jer- sexually harassed jeremy, I don't even Iron, have a vagina. jeremy iron's office in there he's got the horrific like torture tools that look like dragon claws on the on, on the wall and he wears like red surgery outfits or whatever and it's just like this is a lot I'm going to go see someone else. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. He's getting ready to surf the web. I hate the fact that, like, I can't log onto the internet without doing this. It's so inconvenient. Without putting on, putting on my gamer gloves and my gamer headset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? Honestly, if somebody could make the internet like this, <laughs> I'd get tired of it. I would, but I would definitely try it for a little bit just for shits and gigs. Yeah. I mean, at this point, we're all inside anyway. You know, like. Wow, he can click Beijing. <laughs> from, yeah. You know, China's a pretty fucking big place, man. Who could have misclicked it? And like, the internet in China is yellow. You see, there's a pagoda. Oh, no, he hit the fucking. Great firewall. He needs to reorganize that. Okay. <laughs> the great firewall. Yes. This is just like Welcome, Beijing. It looks like a Mortal Kombat screen in an arcade, but <sighs> Oh my god. I love when we were like optimistic that like the internet would keep evolving into this cool looking thing, and now it's just like fucking You just get pop up ads when you <laughs> it's just like social media feeds constantly. Or websites that like have an article that is then separated into a slideshow. So you have to click every page and they get all the ads, ad views. Also, you know what I'm realizing, Max, is uh, like a decent portion of this movie is like Keanu like strapping his face into things. Yeah. It's kind of weird. There's like a lot of scenes where he's just got a thing in his head. You know what else this reminds me of? I don't know if you've seen this movie, like these videos making the rounds recently on Twitter where <laughs> it's the clips from the dumb uh, Benedict Cumberbatch Sherlock show. And he's like being super smart and he does these hand motions and it's like this. Oh, have they taken out the fucking visual effects? That would be fucking great. I would pay to see. Like They didn't take them out, but with them in, it's like hilarious. It is hilarious. But it's I- like people thought this was good. Oh my god! The the, it, the level like most embarrassing thing I've the ever levels seen. that people thought that show was good when the finale aired and the finale was like hysterically bad. Was there like a conspiracy? Yes, theory? that's what I was getting. There was a conspiracy <laughs> theory that the finale was bad on purpose, and that if you were smart enough to figure out the clues they had been li- leaving through the entire show, you would know that the BBC presentation of Apple Tree Yard was actually going to be a secret fourth Sherlock episode that made everything make sense in retrospective. Yeah. Um, and then Apple Tree Yard just turned out to be an ap- adaptation of Apple Tree Yard. And you mentioned people's fury. 
Yeah, people were very mad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, it, there's no way the whole thing could have like seeing that. I'm like, this whole thing was terrible, right? The whole show must have been terrible. If that, like, seeing those videos, it's the most embarrassing thing I've seen in such a long time. Uh, it just is so stupid. Oh, this is interesting. Pharmacom. They hired the Yakuza. You got Pharmacom data in your head. They put, put a, a virus, virus on us. <laughs> 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 I love it when people like don't know how to talk about technology things from like the 90s and they don't know what it is yet and, and they just phrase it bizarrely. They put a virus on us. Wouldn't that like hurt him? Yeah. They cha- they ripped him out of the net. Yeah, but no, the fucking that's all Sherlock is though. The show is just like constant visual things to make it look like Where oh. he looks like he's tweaking out. Yeah. And that's why I would love to see like the raw footage of that without like the 80 million visual effects to just have him. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's like the uh Emperor's new groove thing with Kronk. <laughs> Yeah, but you see, The Emperor's New Groove is an objectively perfect movie. (laughs) Sherlock. And he was pretending to be cool. Yeah. And it was funny because he wasn't. Oh, the church. Oh, my God. Are you ready? The Church of Retransfiguration got a really fancy home screen on their website. Dolph Lundgren in his final U.S. role before... The Expendables as our favorite character. (laughs) He's just so stupid. Don't drag me into this. He's just like, he's boring. I've seen this before. I've seen Killer Priest before. Go fucking read Helsing. But he's like, it's almost like he's punking everyone around him. No, if he like, at the end of the movie... If he was just like, listen, man, I've never even read the Bible. <laughs> I would 100% put him as my favorite. But like the fact that he plays it so straight, besides the fact that your brain has melted into slush by the time we get to his best line. Yeah. He plays it very boringly. There's no like, there's no like religious fervor there. It's just a walking cliche. There's no like, I am passionate about this. And there's a reason why like. <laughs> as much as I like to shit on Cyberpunk 2077, like there's these street pe- preachers you can walk by that think okay. that like think that like all cyberware is blasphemous because you're like defacing God's image. Okay. And you could have worked that into this, like something, like have a conviction of why we have this weird fucking no, Christian hitman. Can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. That would make sense or add no, depth no, to this movie. You can't do that. Nope. <laughs> Austin, I want, but I'm starting to think you just want this movie to be as terrible as possible. <laughs> Uh oh god, who's this guy? Your fucking girlfriend's dad from the nineties. That's who this guy is with his steroid chin. Anyway, no, I kind of like Dolph Lundgren's performance in this. Um weirdly, because it almost seems like he there's this level of ironic detachment where he doesn't care. And it's kind of funny. He's like, Yeah, I'm the Jesus guy. <laughs> I'm the Jesus priest. Okay, here we go. Perhaps, Max, Dolph Lundgren in his performance is paying delicate homage to Reverend Harry Powell, one of the greatest characters in American cinema, played by uh, Robert Mitchum in the masterpiece film, Night of the Hunter. Have you considered that? No. Okay. (laughs) I have not considered that. Love how they just rented out a mall and they're like, just throw shit everywhere. This looks cyberpunk, right? There's mannequins. Throw mannequins everywhere. (sighs) This doesn't feel like a cyberpunk world either. No. Well, there's no sexuality in it, which is one of the big cyberpunk things that's missing, you know? Yes. There's no sexuality. Because cyberpunk stuff, a big part of it too, is that idea of like the post-humanism that comes with advancing technology and also like entrance into a cyberspace. That's, a, that's something that pisses me off about Cyberpunk 2077 is like, sure. despite the fact that like they were making a big deal of just like, oh, you can 
choose any body type and any genitals you want and just do whatever you want. But like people can still turn you down if like your voice isn't feminine enough or something like, right. It's really weird how they portrayed that. And like, it's, it's surface level subversion of a gender binary, but yes. then reinforcing it just on in a different Especially way. Especially with romance options. And like none of the NPCs like do creative stuff with like, like you said, post humanism. Yeah. Like, Oh, well, we can turn any part of our body into anything right now. How has that affected, like, our views of one another or our interactions with each other or, like, people's sexual preference? Like, uh, <laughs> there's so much interesting stuff you can do with the genre. Yeah. But nobody feels like it. Well, the thing is, it, it requires actually, like, putting thought and effort into those things, which the thing is that they're huge questions, you know? I do, I do pray for the day that the Wachowskis of our generation make a incredible cyberpunk esque film about the trans experience, but it exists. It's called matrix. <laughs> no, I'm saying like, enough. I mean, we could use more. Yeah. I mean, matrix four. What if it's good, Max? Wait, I, hold I, on a second. I could hope Henry Rollins have a fucking misfits dude tattoo. Do you see that on his arm? The skull face guy? Okay, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Yeah. But yeah, Henry Rollins, why are you in this movie? He had a six pack and nothing to do. Time to make Johnny mnemonic. I mean, he's trying harder than a lot of people in this movie. I'll give him that, but that's oh. not saying much. But anyway, no, I like there's no sex in this movie and there's very little about gender. And like there's multiple ways to do that, right? We see people with prosthetic uh, uh tech tech body parts, right? Um but like there's no question about like how that changes the boundaries of gender and the body. And also like the other cyberpunk way to do it that's less obvious is if you are doing a cyberpunk where like the digital space is, is like taking a huge, like, um, I don't know, point of interest in, in the thing you're making that also completely shifts the boundaries of gender in an even more profound way than just body modification. And yet this also does nothing like this woman who's like dead or whatever, like, there's no exploration of like her as a human being living in the net or whatever. There's no concept of her experience or anything or her interaction with humans other than her being like a ghost in the shell. Dun, dun, dun. It, I don't know anything about ghost in the shell. Is that also cyberpunk? Yes. 100%. Okay. The, the ghost in the shell is literally like the idea of like the human spirit inside of a machine. Right. That's what the title means. So is it about a machine? It's about a woman who's a detective who is like primarily cybernetic implants. And it's about like trying to level with the fact that you're mostly machine and are you still human? But it's a good, it's a good short anime. The movie was fucking garbage as like, obviously it was going to be. Well, the live action. Yeah. There was also an anime movie, right? Yeah. And anime movies, they vary drastically in quality. That was a pretty good one, yeah. On my list this year, I finally have to watch Berserk. No, you don't. There's very... You need to read Berserk. The anime adaptations all have various flaws in them. Some are worse than others. I'm going to watch the 1997 version of Berserk. No, why would you do <laughs> Why would I not do that? A lot of 90s anime is jank as fuck. Oh my god, look at him. He's like Mary Bo Peep. I know. <laughs> I can't believe they gave him an actual like staff. Like he's hurting. He sheep. looks like he's in a community theater production of just like the, <laughs> the birth of Jesus. Story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Father Joseph is Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, your wife got cucked by. Oh, look at those earrings. This is the most out there gender thing, Max, is that this guy has earrings. <laughs> oh, my God, the subversion. I wonder, we can barely handle it in 1995 that this man has earrings.
Why'd you have to do that? Why'd you smash my hand? To stab you with a Jesus knife. You know... Oh, yeah, there's only one Jane in all of Newark. They should have definitely... He might have passed away at this point. But they should have tried to cast Anthony Perkins in this role. After, um... What the fuck is that movie? Uh, the Ken Russell movie. Where Anthony Perkins is an insane priest or whatever. <laughs> and he's got a giant Jesus dildo that's also a knife. Well, maybe I read this wrong. Maybe it, like the plague was it was supposed to be a plague in the book, but then Crimes of Passion. That's the movie. That movie's crazy, by the way. If you want an insane uh Anthony Perkins performance, like I said, he's a priest in that who's got a stabby dildo <laughs> that's that's also a crucifix. So it's really something. Yeah. And Kathleen Turner. As a total babe. You can try to divert all you want. I'm still being forced to watch Johnny and <laughs> because of you. You can't just talk about better movies the entire time. That's all we've got. The only reason we did this was for Internet 2021, and we passed that a long time ago. I thought you. You have all your notes right there, and <laughs> you haven't touched them Oh, once. I didn't even. I forgot my notes. What did they say? <laughs> this movie sucks. I hate this. I'm glad I'll make be able to make Max what suffer. What does the film say about gender? Oh, we already covered it. Bodies, God damn it. While also combining that with cyberspace. Nothing. And then I have a little thing that drops down as a note and says, not much. <laughs> hmm. Yep, we've said everything. So much for that. So do you like Henry Rollins? I don't dislike the... <laughs> what do we think about Henry Rollins? Let's get a feel in the room here. He's about to get crucified, so... I don't give a shit. He's boring. He's... Uh... This is the part. If this movie was like only an hour long, I might like, like it as sort of a stupid campy shit. It would have been funnier if Dolph Lundgren was in it earlier. And it was like a weird slasher movie. They're hunted by Dolph Lundgren, the psycho priest. I also Ooh. love that he apparently knew that Jesus. That was, he knew that that was Dolph Lundgren and tried to run him over. It's like, what if you were wrong? <laughs> Doesn't matter. We haven't seen police in this movie at all. They don't exist. It's just the Yakuza. Okay, regardless of the police, you don't want to run over an innocent guy just because he's tall. It could have not been Dolph Tall Lundgren. people have had their time. <laughs> and their age has come to an end. Yeah. With cybernetic implants, anybody can be tall. And when everyone's tall, Nobody. no one is. <laughs> That's the ultimate villain of this movie, is just a five-foot guy on Tinder who's tired of getting rejected for that, five That feet. boss bagel guy from like 50 years oh, ago. Oh, God, jeez. You're not my boss. You're not my dad. That last year. Nah. It was either two months ago or, <laughs> or five ten years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Oh, man. So this, this is, is a really long reveal to show that there's no actual person called Dr. Alcom. And it doesn't matter. Well, Max, we have to show that the disease is... Get to the dolphin. The disease is bad. Get to the dolphin. I don't care. I guess that's the other thing I should have mentioned in the introduction is that I might recommend this movie if you're really bored and you're like a Twitter posadist. You might really <laughs> enjoy this movie because it has a telekinetic dolphin that is on the side of the like anarcho-commune. But they are working with the anarchists. Yes. And in and if you're a, a Posadist, you're, that means you're kind of like a Trotskyist. So, like, you probably don't like that. And in the original short story, from what I understand, uh, he is reliant 
the dolphin is reliant on heroin in order Wait. to utilize its hacking ability. Okay, you said that to me earlier, but it only just occurred to me now that, that the dolphin was in the original short story and not just some bullshit they threw in here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I I believe it was the, the government had it addicted to, to heroin so it couldn't what like, the fuck? like betray them or whatever. I don't know. Why? Okay. Dude, I don't fucking know. I have a question for listeners. What is the deal with like looking at dolphins and like telekinetic dolphins throughout the 70s and shit? There was a movie called Day of the Dolphin with George C. Scott about this. What? What? Why? What was in the water? What was going on? Why were people Bethlehem, thinking about this? I think it was just like natural science. We were just realizing like how fucking intelligent dolphins actually were. And people were like, they must be like savants. Yeah. Not just weird rape fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's why dolphins scare me more than sharks. Yeah. Sharks won't. Sharks don't want to eat people. They want to eat seals, and sometimes you look like seals. Yeah, and they don't want to just don't mess with them. They're kind. They're just big fish, and like bop, dol- them, bop them on the snoot if they get yeah if they bite you, and they'll tend to go away because it overloads their nervous system. But still, like yeah, and like dolphins, like can have a bad day, and they're just gonna be like, I'm about to just drown you for no reason. They could also save you because they have compassion. But they have emotions and they could be like, no, nah, I'm going to fuck your shit up. <laughs> it's the same reason why killer whales scare me a lot more than uh, sharks. Max, what do you think is the scariest sea animal? The scariest sea animal? To what? you. Um, I don't know. Dolphins are up there, honestly. Dolphins are scary. But they could be nice, but they also could not be, you know? That's what's scary about them. I mean, we don't know about the eldritch horrors that live deep. <laughs> yeah, deep. we do. I, you know, I was really disappointed when, I don't know if I've mentioned this on the show. I originally was a, for a brief period of time, I studied environmental science and then I quit because I was depressed by it. Uh, but there's no chance for giant eldritch horrors in the middle of the ocean. I'm sorry, because it's too hard to get sunlight and nutrients out to that area to support such large animals. I mean, giant squids are fucking enormous and they live at the bottom of the sea. Yeah, but they're they're not like out in the middle of the ocean. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. They're also cephalopods. So that they're kind of like an exception. And we know they exist, is my point. There's no hidden massive you know, like No, I'm not saying Godzilla like, I'm not monster. saying like yeah. Godzilla size. I'm just saying fucking like terrifying to look at yeah like gulper gulper eels and anglerfish already (laughs) fucking terrifying we still don't know where eels come from still scary um but no i would also i find it hilarious that clownfish will like attack things like a hundred times their size they're just like bold motherfuckers cats of the ocean they're they'll just fucking there's all these adorable videos of like scuba divers being like, oh, it's the Finding Nemo fish. And then like the clownfish will just like ram full force into their goggles. <laughs> it's great. I would say the thing that scares me most is are like giant squids. No, nah. just because they got like a beak and it's like. Yeah, but they're not going to fuck with you. They they really have no interest in not you right whatsoever. now. But Max. <laughs> in 20 years when the giant squid wars come. Max, one of the side effects of a heating ocean are the facts that cephalopods will get larger. Oh, goodbye, Henry Rollins. You're getting crucified. Dolph, he's not going to tell you if you crucify him. He can't give you the information. Yeah, and that character's motivation is like, they like, oh, he'll kill anyone to keep his body full of cyberware, but he's also super Christian. Uh, I, I don't get it. Ugh. I wonder if he's in the original story. I bet that also makes a lot more sense in the original story. Like, yeah, you could have like done that with literally two lines of dialogue where it's like, oh, he's part of a fucking cult that believes that like the more cybernetic you are, the closer you are to God yeah, something. or something like that. But not even like you don't even need dialogue. It's just the nuance no representation like, yeah or just like have that fucking like be the name of like the church or something and just like the, the neo- cathode ray <laughs> mission 
Neo Tech Knight Baptist yeah Baptist Church or like something yeah. like that something the Knights of Columbus that's what yeah. they do right I don't know what they do I just don't trust them they S- paid for my dad's college tuition uh, back in the seventies my dad was like I can't afford to go to college and then the Knights of Columbus were like we'll pay three thousand dollars. <laughs> For your expensive college education. He has a quarter. <laughs> go get yourself some college. It's so funny. He tells us, this is like my dad's only funny story. He would go to like the Knights of Columbus. He went to like the first meeting to get like the form to get them to pay. And then he never went back and they paid for his college education. America was a fucking joke. Fuck all you really old people who were like, oh, it was so hard. Fuck you. You could just go to a Knights of Columbus meeting, have them pay for your school. <laughs> And it was just something you could do. <laughs> yes, it was just something you could do. While working at McDonald's and uh, and buying your house with your McDonald's wage. He's in the Navy. That's what this could use. Join the Navy. More village. See the Dolphins. More village people songs. That would have made this movie better. The village people kind of are cyberpunk, if you really think about <laughs> it. I just love that, like, the collective 90s denial that the village people were gay. Just like... <laughs> what? Just like the amount of, like... I remember the 90s. I remember, like, straight people just like, yeah, let's dance to this at weddings. It's not... Op- Every, you mean YMCA? YMCA. I mean, for, everywhere. Yeah. So many... Baseball games yeah. that I've been to. It's like just to hang out with all the boys. Yeah. Yeah. I remember in high school. Young man, put your pride on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> the 90s denialism is like, nah, this is just a dude's rock anthem. This yeah. is not a gay. I anthem. mean, that's like with Queen as well. Yeah. They do that constantly. Explosion. Is that the first explosion of this movie? Maybe, because it's the first time I've felt something in about an hour. (laughs) If this was directed by Paul Verhoeven, you can bet there would have been another explosion by now. Oh, was that just there to create sexual tension? And here we get to the point where Keanu Reeves now voices the questions and complaints of the audience. He starts screaming, what the fuck is going on? He gives his famous, terrible monologue. It's almost one of a Razzie. But there's like a lot of good lines in this. You want to recite it together? No, I now suddenly you do it. I'm responsible for the entire fucking world. Everybody and his mother is trying to kill me. If my head doesn't blow up first, maybe it's not just about you anymore. Uh. Listen, you listen to me. You see that city over there? That's where I'm supposed to be. Not down here with the dogs and the garbage and last month's newspapers blowing back and forth. I've had it with them. Those fucking last month's newspapers. I've had it with you. I've had it with all this. I want room service. (sighs) And like... (laughs) Okay, one, that's fucking hilarious. I want a club scene. Okay, we're done. Um, But... (laughs) Like, we never established him as, like, a hoity-toity, yeah, he flied first class, and yes, he was in a hotel room at one point. Yeah. But he was never just like, oh, the commoners are like... Yeah, if anything, it's like we establish him as someone who's equally exploited. Yeah. And just trying to get out. And then you get this line where he just explodes, and it's like, I want room service. And you're like, what the (laughs) fuck? What the fuck? (laughs) And he wants a club sandwich. The fanciest of all sandwiches. Club sandwich and a cold Mexican beer, $10,000 a night hooker. I don't care how good the sex is. I'm not paying $10,000 for a (laughs) hooker. Jesus fucking Christ, people. You know, people talk a lot about medical bankruptcy, but another issue is hooker bankruptcy. (laughs) We must address it. That must be like an actual thing in like Amsterdam or like places. Hooker bankruptcy. Yeah, I guess so. 
Like, that's the point where I'll take sex addi- addiction seriously, not when, like, Tiger Woods needs an out for cheating on his wife. Like, I don't know. I'm addicted to sex. I'm sorry. I didn't want to fuck her, babe, but maybe Kanye, I just had to. Maybe Kanye West is a sex addict, and that's why he's fucking Jeffrey Star. But <laughs> <laughs> I thought you didn't want to bring up cursed current information. That's not cursed. That's, like, <laughs> like my favorite thing that I've ever heard in my life. I allegedly. Allegedly. I don't care if it's not true, though, because, like... <laughs> I was dying. Oh my god! Because my one of my roommates is like to this day still a huge Kanye stands. Like, listen, I know he's garbage and insane and that, but he made graduation. You gotta. I'm just like, eh, but like Jeffrey Star. Oh my god, that'd be fucking hilarious. Kanye with Jeffrey clapping them cheeks. <laughs> Somebody just posted like a screenshot from White Chicks. Of just like, no, honey, you don't understand. It's a man. (laughs) Oh, my God. For all of the listeners who don't pay attention to celebrity Twitter gossip, and I normally don't either, but at time of recording, there was a rumor that one of the reasons that Kanye West and Kim Kardashian are getting a divorce is because Kanye was cheating on her with Jeffree Star. Imagine someone listening to this like 40 years from now and just being like, what in the absolute (laughs) fuck is going on? And if you don't know who Jeffree Star is, good. Save yourself the headache. Yeah. For for all you archaeologists out there, we've experienced a hell of a like a hell of a week so far for 2021. We got the Bean Dad. We've got the uh, nonsense storming the Capitol building. We've got Jeffree Star and Kanye, uh, and the sad announcement that the Yellowstone volcano is not going to erupt anytime soon. To end all of this, so we won't know. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, I am so ready. I was just like, fuck yeah. Bring it on. Why? You've had no chemistry. It's just yelling and bad fight scenes. Yeah, but Max. I know, I know I know. the laws of heterosexuality in a movie mean that if a woman and a man are together for more than 20 minutes, they need to develop attraction to each other. I mean, like, that's, just, that's just like real life. All right. I mean, I've been around... I want to say several women in my life. That you're I not have. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> and if you're Keanu Reeves and there's another woman in the room, it's going to happen eventually. Unless Ice-T magically appears to <laughs> cock block you. You know what's funny? What? The anarchy sign the last time I saw it was like much more like smudged up and thing. So I like to think that's not a tattoo. And he just keeps universe. drawing it on. <laughs> he just draws an anarchy symbol on his forehead every morning. <laughs> oh, man. Ice tea, what is in your mind? 1995 was a very busy year for Ice tea. He did this, he did Tank Girl, and then he did a Walter Hill movie called Trespass. Which, speaking of Keanu Reeves, also stars William Sattler. It's William Sattler and Bill Paxton, and they're trying to get like a, a thing of gold in a building that burned down because they're firefighters and they found it. And it's a burned down building, but it turns out this burned down building is in a gang territory. And, oh, gangs. And the gang is run by Ice-T oh, and gangs. Ice Cube. Oh, no. Both of them. Both of them. And Vanilla Ice shows up. Got the trifecta. Dangerous. I can't even, that, I can't that even that ironically like Vanilla Ice anymore because he's a yeah. fucking Trump supporter. <gasps> he is? Yeah. Well, don't worry, he's not in that movie. But he is a Trump supporter? Yeah. What a weird... I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what to make of that. I mean, I guess if you're going to go for a crowd that unironically likes you then and you're Vanilla Ice, I guess that's your only demographic, but still. Oh, it's Jones. The dolphin. <laughs> Who attacks Keanu Reeves <laughs> on site because Keanu Reeves calls him a fish. <laughs> this dolphin is hacked into the main frame. <laughs> Can I just ask you, like, what was what were you thinking? My like, brain had died at this point. I'm just, just like, like, there's a dolphin inside this bridge. <laughs> That they're using as a supercomputer to like conduct their cyber warfare suite. Very bizarre. 
in any other movie, I'd be like, wow, this is like my favorite movie now. I love this. And you're like, this is just too little too late. <laughs> you should have started with the dolphin. Then I would have paid attention. Put the dolphin in the previous half hour where nothing happened and I'm bored. Frankly, it would have been great if we got a lot of the exposition from the dolphin. Because that alone, you don't even have to do anything else. You're just like, the dolphin is telling him about NAS. That would have been way more interesting. You have a cyberspace thing where he can... This is how you work in the posthumanism. He can commune with the dolphin in cyberspace. That would be great. Yeah. You get full-on conversations with the dolphin. Throw in a couple of fucking Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy jokes in there and writes Why? itself. Never read or seen Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But I don't understand what you mean when you say you throw in those jokes. Are there dolphins in it? Yes, um... The opening for the first book talks about how humans thought we were the smartest thing on Earth when we were, in fact, the third th smartest thing on Earth. Uh, dolphins are the second smartest things on Earth, and they all leave Earth shortly before it's about to be destroyed, um, which leads to another book in the series called So Long and Thanks for All the Fish. But <laughs> What's the first smartest thing? Mice. Even the movie adaptation of uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide, which leaves out a lot of stuff from the book, is still remarkably good. I, I would recommend that. But yeah, just just throw in a so long and thanks for all the fish reference. You know what we should... I'll, I'll put that on my short list of movies that I wouldn't mind doing. It's a, it's a rare type of movie to see Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy that doesn't really get made anymore. But then we'd have to put up with that annoying woman. Oh, that one. Yeah. You don't. You know the one. You don't like Zoe Deschanel? No. I mean, I yes, she's been typecast as the Manic Pixie Dream Girl over and over again, but I don't have any problem with her personally or her acting style. I'm sorry. I'm not cool enough for you, Austin. Someday I'll aspire to that. Oh, my God. Hit me, dolphin. Again, another scene with... Keanu with a fucking thing in his head. And like the the fucking dolphin has more cybernetic implants than anybody else. In the, like or at least That's visible true. ones in the anyone in the movie. Yeah. The dolphin is the only one like living in the cyberpunk world. Yeah. They're the, all just like the dolphin tourists. is the only interesting character in this movie. Honestly, you say that, but I often feel like if you just substituted human, like this is maybe a fun screenwriting exercise. If you're writing a type of movie, that you could get away with this with where it's like, if you substituted this role, that's a human character with an animal, would the movie be more fun and interesting? I feel like in many cases, the answer would probably be yes. Like here's a fun comparison to make, like compare the first Conan, the barbarian movie with Arnold compare that to a movie from right around the same year directed by Don Coscarelli called the beast master. And I want you to watch both these movies and, like, see if you care about the danger and peril that the side characters in the Conan movie are in compared to, like, the ferrets in Beastmaster. You watch the movie and you're like, oh, my God, these fucking ferrets. And there's nothing about them. They're just ferrets. Yeah. But you're seeing them, like, climb up and chew a rope like a team. And you're like, fuck, yeah. And it's so much better than watching, like, a human being do it. So I don't know, Max. Maybe you can find the synthesis. Like, the perfect half- Half and half, like fucking um. Maybe the feral kid from Mad Max Two is the best example of that. I don't know. That's a gamble. I know, but I know some people don't like the feral kid. But I am a big fan of the feral kid. I yeah, think. but I mean, like, whenever you do a kid, that's like that's a gamble. Yeah, but feral, and, feral kid is good because all he does is grunt. He doesn't yeah. make annoying like. Yeah, Max, get him! <laughs> you got it, Doctor Max. <laughs> he's not that short round. Or kid, feral, short. Oh. But, like, the other thing, though, Max, is, like, the reason it gets away with that is because I love how we're talking. Mad Max is awesome. Yeah, I love how we're talking through, like, the most epic action scene of the movie. You knew this was going to happen. This is the best possible thing that could happen. <laughs> Imagine if we had to talk about this. <laughs> Imagine what if we decided to nightmare. do an episode of the podcast dedicated to this movie. We talked about more than what is in this movie. We talked about gender. We talked about cyberpunk. The only thing we didn't mention is Donna Haraway in the Cyborg Manifesto. But I just did. 
and I'm not going into it now. Yeah. Instead, you can listen to any other... <laughs> listen to our Tetsuo the yeah. Iron Man episode. Which talk- also is not a great episode, but still, the movie's amazing. And Donna Haraway... We'll her, redo her, that episode yeah. at some point. Donna because- Haraway's work is vital to understanding cyberpunk. Is that the episode that I was just, like, vehemently sick the entire time? You were patient zero for coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> in 2019. I demanded to do that episode anyway, even though I really should have just called it a day. <laughs> I'm just been like, we'll do this later, man. I'm not up to it. There was a series of episodes where you're, like, violently ill <laughs> for, like, the, that period of, like, three months. Most of them were solid, though. It's carrying the cure for NAS. The thing that we mentioned a bit before. Uh, like I said, in the Japanese cut, there are apparently many more scenes of Takeshi Kitano mourning his daughter, us being told visually that his daughter died from NAS. And it would be nice to see more of an emotional, like, like I want to see what the process of being sick from NAS is. It yeah. should be disturbing and upsetting. Not just this woman shakes and passes out. Yeah. Like seeing a young kid get cancer is like this is disturbing like seeing their body waste away it's like jesus you know like i wish the dolphin had killed him but the dolphin kills jesus man dolph lundgren though so why did you kill him because they're corporate rivals okay but let him fucking kill johnny and then but he killed he killed him because he because of his personal connection with wanting a cure for NAS, he might not try to profiteer off it in the way that this guy wants to because he killed his daughter. Dolphin, kill everyone. Unleash your dolphin powers. You know, it's Use that satellite dish thing that you had before and disable them. Well, we know that the dolphin can do that because it's going to do that with Dolph Lundgren. But it probably doesn't want to because it might hit Johnny by accident. Probably. I don't know. There are people standing pretty close to Johnny earlier and they seemed fine. This is like this whole action scene is just like, what the fuck is happening? Who cares? I can't tell who's who. They're just like running around. Everybody's silhouettes that vaguely look like they're wearing riot gear. <laughs> it, I look, can't. it looks like they're running around like a My Three Sons. Like, yeah, like a laser tag arena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's just on fire. Oh, the Coke finger. Look out. Oh, that's so funny. He just like is about to fall through the floor. I defeated you by smiling at you aggressively. (laughs) Like, what the fuck is going on, my dude? Lighten up these scenes. Differentiate your opposing sides by silhouette. It's a mess. Max, the movie's trying to make you experience what it's like to live in the postmodern subjectivity by disorienting you and and divorcing you. Give me some shot continuity so I can understand like what the fuck and how the fuck they got there. Max, it's supposed to bring you into the experience of Johnny as a postmodern subject. No, my Coke finger will be my downfall. It will be his downfall. Not the Coke finger. I should have just used a fucking gun. But I had to be stylish. Wow. I love how they hated the the dummy. They dropped so much, they dropped a flaming thing on top of it so you can see how big <laughs> it was. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Jesus time. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the best line. Jesus time. I mean, it's the best, like, and I guess timing wise, it's fucking amazing too, because like, <laughs> yes, we just had that, like, you don't do that after like this big action, like struggle, like they're yeah. on the edge of the cliff. You, you have a dissolution of tension after that, right? Yeah. You, you give the audience time to get their bearings. No, fuck you. Jesus time. <laughs> yeah. It's like, there's no false resolution or anything. It's just like, they're like, oh, he's dead. And then Dina Myers looks up and it's like, Jesus time. <laughs> Thanks, Takeshi Kitano. I really appreciate it. The end. <laughs> I have the rest of the facts of the code now. Yeah, we're still faxing in the year 2021. Jesus Christ.
I love how his outfit is all ripped up now and he looks like like a weird Roman centurion. <laughs> like what is he wearing? Why is he wearing a life of Brian? I, yeah, I, what's going on? D- doesn't doesn't his performance seem ironic though it's funny his performance is funny he's like i'm the m- vessel of mercy <laughs> oh god here comes jones oh this is another great moment he calls it a spawn of satan <laughs> yeah the dolphin is a spawn of satan the dolphins were never mentioned in the bible they're a spawn of satan <laughs> yeah we all know it and then we get a POV shot moving towards Dolph Lundgren's head as he's about to explode. And it's like, is that the POV of the sound wave? That's so weird. <laughs> he looked directly into the camera there. That was not good. It's a good, good, goodbye to American films for 20 years. <laughs> this destroyed the American film industry. Or no, destroyed his career, I guess. Yeah. Until the was it literally the expendables that brought yes. him back? I don't know if it was this that destroyed his career, or maybe he was just like, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. So there he is. There he's gone. He's all burned up. We officially are out of reasons to watch this movie because the, the Jesus time is over. The Jesus time is over. The dolphin doesn't matter anymore. We have the really weird last Takeshi line. Katano is dead. Ice T gives the last line that's really weird though, where he's like, "It's garbage." <laughs> you remember this? Which is true. Yeah, he's like, "It's garbage. Get it out of here." Speaking of which, you ever see the movie "Surviving the Game" with Ice T? Get I the think- get the power up. Press the power button. Max, answer my goddamn question. Have I ever seen the what? Survive in the game. No, I haven't. That I think we've talked about this on the show. There's like a line from Ice T. He's like fist fighting Gary Busey in that. And he throws him into like a cabin that's about to explode. And he I forget what he says. He says like, try the roast. The beef. dolphin can take you into the data. The dolphin can take you into the data. Who are you? Max, I wanted to figure out while we were watching this who that woman was, but I wasn't paying attention. She no, they they explained that. I was gonna say who is she? She was the head of the board, I wanna say, but her memory was saved in an offshore Swiss memory bank. What? So, so she still technically runs the company, but they're like holding her against her will. Okay. She's like a digital ghost. Okay. But she she invented the cure, I'm assuming. It's implied. And wanted to give it to people, but the evil board members were like, no, we will make money because capitalism. And yeah. This movie's engaging on that level. Of like the, oh, the head of the company was a good por- person, but the evil board of directors is trying to only make money. What silly people? Who would run a corporation like that? Yeah. No, the celebrity person in charge was totally good, Max. By the way, did you see that Elon Musk became the richest man in the world? I don't understand. Talking how about that's totally good men, physically possible. Like, what do you mean? Because like he's just powering his way to the top on pure bullshit. That's the thing. Like, Bezos. As much as I hate him, I get it. Because like everybody uses Amazon. Like so many fucking people use Amazon. Yeah, I try not to, but like so many people do. Well, you can't not use it if you use the internet. Because the number of websites using AWS is insane. Yes. Yeah. But even just like Amazon as a shipping company, they have a near monopoly on that. Yeah. So like I can understand him being the richest person on earth, but like selling overpriced electric cars to people is a very niche market and getting grants for rockets that keep exploding from the U.S. government like can only get you so far, man. It just shows you that money is made up. It's just pure (laughs) bullshit. If Elon Musk can be the richest man on the planet, that's just like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. This this CGI character it looks exactly like Elon Musk. 
This looks like something the characters from Reboot would make fun of. I don't know what that is. It's like the earliest example of like a CGI show thing. It's It doesn't hold up, but that's the point. But like this looks... What was that dumb Cartoon Network show we were reminiscing? Code Lyoko. <laughs> is this what that's like? Code Lyoko. Code Lyoko. What is that? Actually, don't talk about it. Never mind. Um, it was bad. Let's talk about this amazing NES era graphics, though. In this, uh, I mean, did we mention that there's like some NES si- were like stylized? <laughs> this just looks like fucking 3D spit. Well, this is like when the final boss battle, basically. Yeah, this is because we were all expecting that in this movie. And then Ice-T has to narrate it so we have any clue what the fuck is going on. He's like, he doubled himself, and And then the double (laughs) gets shot. And then he's dodging laser blasts from a... The only way is to hack your own brain. A concept that we've literally never explored before. What? Yeah, like, just watching this, this is like... I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't know what to make of that any Tube man Oh and the dolphin's doing something now I guess Yeah Oh my god This movie gives me a headache Austin Why Why are we watching this the again? The internet 2021 Where it's Jesus time She couldn't have just given her face to you She didn't know But now they can download it on their VCRs Oh the mystery science theater fucking <laughs> The potato satellite In the not satellite. too distant future <laughs> That was a bad miniature, guys. Come on. <laughs> it was not a good one. They spent all their money on the expensive boss battle. They didn't need to. All the internet stuff in this movie is terrible. Just abstract it. It always works out better. Can you imagine if that boss battle thing was like what we had to do instead of a captcha? <laughs> God damn, what a nightmare that would be. I don't know. Some of those captures are sneaky. That might be easier. <laughs> might be easier, but it'd be more annoying. It's like he's got to double himself so the capture <laughs> knows he's a human being. Oh, that must be where Dolph Lundgren watches TV. <laughs> yeah, on the giant cross. Yeah. <laughs> I All love right. how the dolphin has like those red, white, and yellow plugs that you used to have to plug into the back of your TV to like set up game cubes and shit yeah. plugged into its head. Yeah, of course. It's got <laughs> HDMI cables. Oh, and yeah. everything. I also love how the whole payoff for his character is just like the dumbest collection of nonsense. Like, what is this? He had a childhood. He remembers his childhood and then they pan up to his mom and it's so weird because his mom is giving him this like condescending look. You son of a bitch. You're going to grow up to be in John him and it's like, what was the use of any of that? Are you happy? You got nothing. Your child. All you remember is shit. Just like this movie. You know, what would have been an interesting philosophical question, Max is if he sold his childhood, but his brain recreated the memories because there's like a biological function of childhood memories that it fabricated for him. Or if we want to go like boring... And it changed his personality. Or if we want to go boring romance option, he can be like, listen, I may not remember my childhood, but we can create new childhoods together and move on. Just like, okay, I might not be able to remember mine, but like... Or just like I may not be able to remember my childhood, but, but I've allowed others to experience theirs by releasing the cure for techno aids. But do you know about like baby play? <laughs> Pharmacom is literally on fire. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> they blew it up. Payback time, Etna coming up. Yo, here's the other hit line Dolph Lundgren's charred corpse. garbage get it out of here (laughs) and that honestly sums up the entire movie they throw him out of the thing and that's like the final shot of the movie (laughs) or this is i guess yeah this bad proto fight club yeah ending you met me at a very strange point in my life cgi'd in front of a burning building (laughs) with dolphins 
Thank you, fucking Bob Longo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he did write this screenplay too. Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Goodness gracious me. Though I can't, you can't say that, oh, they destroyed me. Well, this has been Johnny Mnemonic. Uh, I hope you were able to survive all 160 the next time, gigabytes of this episode. The next time Austin is like, Max, I can't believe you picked a bad movie. I want you all to remember this. I just think about like the timeliness. Think about how bad we would feel if we didn't do this in the internet 2021. I you would have to live with that for the rest of your years. There's never going to be another 2021. We did it, though. It's done. See, you barely even feel it. <laughs> it's only credited it as Takeshi. Not Takeshi Kitano, just Takeshi. Well, I think part of his stage name... What is this part of his stage name? Like, Beat Takeshi or something? I don't know. It doesn't matter, but... Yeah, so uh, this movie was not good. Um, thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks a lot, Henry Rollins. Um, <laughs> it's all your fault. But, uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Honestly, though, I did kind of have fun. Just like. It is a stupid kind of fun 90s yeah. movie if you're in the right state of mind and don't expect it to be good. And not um, like, don't even expect it to be like, oh, the music is bad by Brad Fidel, who did the Terminator music. Oh, God, step down for him. But um, yeah, there's no. Da, 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 no, da, da. and it's not even good in like a so bad it's good way. It's no. just like kind of miserably bad. And eventually you get Stockholm Syndrome from how bad it is. And but. then at some point it's Jesus time. <laughs> and you're like, wow. Um, but that's a lot of shit to wade through when you could watch a movie like Blade that also has Udo uh, Udo Kier. And there's all sorts of great shit in Blade. And then you get some motherfuckers trying to ice skate a pill. But if you're waiting for great lines, I don't know if this movie's worth it. But No, I, neither do I. This might be like the first. Have we done another movie on the podcast that like neither of us would recommend? <laughs> that we've done watch? another movie on the podcast that neither of us chose. Is uh uh in diesel oh yeah dark well that you liked that better than i did but that movie was interesting in terms of its it had a premise yeah no pitch black it's just that, that pitch black that movie made like it physically hurt me to watch that yeah. movie but you gotta say you you gotta say goodbye before you say good night what does he say? <laughs> Gotta can't say goodbye without. Okay, saying but goodbye. we're talking about other movies during our wrap up <laughs> of this movie to show you how much it stuck with us. <laughs> but yeah, so um, I guess if you want to wa- listen to more episodes of better movies on the Spectator Film Podcast, and we will be doing better movies soon. Yes, this we can only go up from here, yeah. folks. Um, you can find more at spectatorfilmpodcast.com or find more of our ep- episodes on iTunes, Spotify, or Stitcher, or anywhere else where you can find podcasts, probably. Um. And yeah, we have a letterbox you can find by uh, the going to the link on our website and a Twitter and an Instagram. Hit us up on social media to let us know what movie we should do next. Oh, Joe. by the way, we totally forgot to mention this, and I should have said this at the start of the show. And we'll do this next. We'll give another shout out at the beginning of next episode. What? But, oh, okay. If, unless we're not thinking of the same thing. Well, but, obviously not. I was just saying that I wanted to thank Alicia for doing the artwork for our previous episode on Carnival of Souls. Well, yeah. Awesome work. That's what I was thinking. Okay, I was going yeah. to thank them again at the <laughs> front of the show next time. Okay, but yes, well, thank you, sure. Alicia. It's yeah. beautiful, and we love it. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, no, no. Any final words, no, no, Austin? No, 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 no